Yeah, okay. Too. So, and then how are, you know, some practical tips for dating if you don't want to go through a period of abstinence. So often, often people, um, often it's recommended <coughs> to, uh, if you're, um, uh, let, let's say I was suffering from love addiction, often it would be recommended to me to just take a, a time out to connect to God, to feel peace, to feel my wholeness within before going back into the... But, you know, let's say I was to meet someone and they didn't want to go through the abstinence phase or they'd tried that and they didn't really like it. And they just wanted to go just to find God and do the, and do the dating thing. Then these then it would be, these are the things I would do. One of the things to know is there's, there's two ways, you know, to let go. One is to, to get, to have like abstinence from it. And one is to like fully embrace it uh, and, and spiritually do the work as well while you fully embrace the thing. Um, and uh, so here are the things I would do. It's, it's quite an interesting question because I'm not dating at the moment. But these are the things I'd do if I was, if I was going to go on a date and uh, I was going to, and my intention on going on the date would be for transcendence, transcendence of this projection of love addiction onto another person as being, having the power to rescue me. So the, one of the first things I'd do, I would, I would do one of the things, I would, um, hopefully I'd be able to have a photo of the person, or ask for the permission to have a photo of the person. I, I would do this here, loads of things I'd be doing. I'd do the Course in Miracles, one of the, from the early lessons of the Course in Miracles, is to look around the room and to say that everything is equally meaningless, you see. So I'm withdrawing my projection of specialness onto an image, you see. So the Course in Miracles, one of the early lessons in A Course in Miracles is to look around the room and to give equal attention and equal time to each object in the room. So you're not really staring at anything in the room. So you, you, I would stare at the light bulb for one second and say, this light bulb is meaningless. Then I'd look at the table for one second and say, this table is meaningless. It has no, it's, it's, it's neutral. It has no value. Yeah. I'd look at the chair for one second and say, this chair is meaningless. It has no value. Then I'd look at the photo of the girl and I'd say, this girl is meaningless. And I'd, I would do that every day, twice a day, every day for about a minute, just not very long, mm. just taking out the value of projected importance that this image has for me. You know, it's like when I look at the table, you know, it's like, you know, there's no, it's not a big deal. I've just looked at the table for a second. So I'm eventually by doing that, I'm withdrawing this magical projection <laughs> that I put onto this thing as being anything more important than the table. Then I'd carry on, I'd, go, I'd do that before my date. And then I could practice secretly with the date, you see. I could look at the date for a second and say in my head, you're meaningless. Mm -hmm. And then quickly look at the menu and go, this menu is meaningless. Mm -hmm. And then look at the waiter and this waiter is meaningless. So I'm giving equal attention to each thing and taking out the, the value yes. that I've projected onto this thing. Meaningless? Or neutral, or you can say neutral. Because meaningless means, almost seems like a negative, you're meaningless, you're worthless. Okay, well, you're, neutral, you're, you could, you could... You know, you're not important, you know, stupid or, you know, meaningless, okay. to me, sounds like that. Yeah. Neutral, you could say neutral. And, uh, yeah, we're recording, so, so that that's fine as long as you're happy to be on... Yeah. So yes, neutral, you can use the word neutral or valueless, yeah. or valueless, whatever had connotation, it's neutral without projecting, projecting specialness onto it. You know, yeah. so like the table is a neutral object, the teddy bear is a neutral object, the plant is a neutral object, this image of this thing is neutral. And also, what the Course of Miracles is teaching is give each thing equal amount of time. You know, like I, I had food addiction, so I would stare at donuts. Everything else would be like unimportant, but I would stare at the donuts. But I wouldn't, you know, but actually this is teaching you, like don't stare, like one second for the donuts, one second for the table, mm. one second. So I'm teaching, I'm taking out that... The charge. The charge, the projection yes. I'm putting up. So I, you know, carry on dating. More meaningless. 
and um, so me meaningless, valueless, neutral, whatever. So that's one of the Course in Miracles. And my intention would be that I get no more, you know, no more charge, no more excitement out of looking at the table for a second as this. And it will start to happen because it's, uh, it's, it has a lot of spiritual power when you're doing it to be free of putting so much, you know, godly status onto one thing. Because God is equal in everything, not in, you know, God is, e later on it's found as you let go of the projections, God is equally in the table as it is in the flower, as it is in the girl, as it is in, you know, as in, in the, the teacup. So these are, these are all equally when all the projections are taken out. So that's one thing I'd do. I'd also practice a great thing to do, which I've had great experience with in charged situations. I've not, had it, I'm not, I've not been in a romantic situation for a while. But I've had it in a, in a place where I was angry at someone. And I did the thing of uh, the observer. Go to the observer. So there was a lady in a spiritual group who was, um, um, yeah, she didn't, you know, she, it was obvious she, she had said things she didn't like, the way I talked, the things I said in the group. And, you know, my ego didn't like her as well, because she didn't like my ego, I didn't like her ego. So she would come into the room, and then my ego would go off, I don't like her, and it's her again. And then, and she sat in the room, and then I just said, well, let's go to the observer of me and her. What's observing my anger at this lady and my thoughts, and what's observing the whole room and the whole situation? I went to the observer, and it collapsed. In a split second, this animosity I had, and I was like happy. It's like it was no, it was not a big deal. I wasn't sure why I was in my story and why I was making a story about her. It just collapsed. So I know that would also work for me, um, and I'd probably I would I'd recommend to myself. I can watch this video. You know, if I'm going to meet and I'm getting hooked into this woman, so I can get obsessed by by this woman, I just remind myself. Well, what's observing my thoughts? Pun. Was it me? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're recording. So <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're recording. Okay. Um, so I'd go to the observer. I'd go to the observer of um, of the thoughts, and then the observer of, of the of the of the person, and then detach from the whole story. You know, it's not it's not important. So once you're in the the bigger expansive detachment these whole things collapse and everything. So I'd go to the observer of it and just collapse the energy. Well, you know, if, if, if I'm like having like this kind of, I don't know, I could have lust. Well, what's observing the lust? So then, oh, there's a detached observing of the lust. Then suddenly the lust will collapse. Or there's this story. Oh, she's, she's going to, she's the one for me. She's mm -hmm. going to make my life happy forever. Mm -hmm. I've got to have her then if I go to the observer of that and detach that, that will collapse the story. So I keep doing that. So I might get hooked back into the story, then I have to go to the observer again and detach the story and collapse it. Or I might go into the lust. Mm. Then I have to go to the observer of the lust and collapse it. So I'd be quick applying the observer to it. The other thing would be to... Um, Um, yeah, so those would be some of the things. I could, I could also do the Course in Miracles on her. I can pray for a miracle and a shift in my perception to see her differently. I could pray for a miracle, a shift in my perception to see my lust differently. I could pray for a miracle, a shift in my perception to see my thoughts about her differently. So I could use the Course in Miracles, or I could say, use another Course in Miracles lesson on the situation. Instead of obsession and lust, I could see peace. You know, or instead of longing or loneliness, I could see peace. So I could use that. I'd continuously use that. My aim would be um, uh, also I can chunk it down. That's a, that's an NLP expression. What are the th individual hooks that are really hooking me in into the situation? Do I like her hair? Am I really fixated? And then I could I could go to the observer of me being interested in her hair, or do I like do I, do I like the way she dresses? So I can, like, I can use all of these tools to unhook from the different aspects that I'm hooking into. 
These are what I call my projected magical qualities, higher power things. Unhook from that, you see. And then start to get to this level of like, actually I'm not going to, like, I would never obsess about a table or a chair or a book, you know. It, it, just, it doesn't stick in my consciousness. So, so uh, I would let all of that go. So those are the kinds of things I could do to release that.